Hello and welcome back to another episode of Battletech. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing Swan Song, the campaign where we have dialed up uh, the difficulty to the absolute maximum. It's time for blood food, uh, blood food that needs to be uh, settled. So the local pirate organization hires us to do that in uh, the, on their behalf. It's Tundra, which is fantastic, destroying a base and just, yeah, just being all around awesome. 521 or 728. I think we're going for full. Well, well, Saiken, don't be so greedy. Nah, let's let's be exactly that greedy. I'm still waiting for kind of the jackpot when we are um, destroying an entire lance and we can loot like everything. So we are okay on the money. Might as well go for all loot. For now, we wanted to take the Vindicator. Mockbite goes here, Mox goes here, Bradford goes here. And let's take. Hmm, that's a good question. Tigan still has a bit more experience that he needs to gain, so maybe we'll take him. Lily is an obvious alternative, being high spirited. Well, let's give her the chance to earn her special abilities as well. So, do we have everything? I think yes. Let's deploy and uh, kick it off, guys. Let's begin our mission. Command interface initiated. Time to land. And all we got to do is destroy the base garrison and the base. That can mean a lot of things. It really depends uh -huh. on aye the aye. quality of the base garrison, to be honest. Waiting for orders. I hear ya. Reporting. Enemy contact. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, light makes. I was hoping we would get a few more serious combatants. But if there are light makes, there is at least a chance that there might also be kind of a heavy mech. The flea and the spider are not necessarily fear-inducing. That we were eating them for breakfast. Is that it? I'm barely scratched. Indicator takes some damage. Okay, cool. Minor damage, Commander. Nothing to see here. Indicator moves over. We're definitely putting in vigilance. Got a crab. Got a shadow hawk. I would like to get that shadow hawk. And let's start with the crab. Receiving you. Punchback moves up. We're still focusing on the crab. Good, that's a perfect scenario. Prep takes all of uh, the LRMs. And we're almost generating no heat, so might as well hit the spider. Tell you what, we'd better check my targeting system. Good. Griffin moves over. Engaging target. 
hitting the crab and hitting really hard. Large lasers already destroyed. It's unstable, so that means it cannot move very far. And we'll potentially get what can I do for you? a good hit on it. Vindicator moves up. Vigilance for extra defense. And let's finish Tell the crab. There's the knockdown, like finally. Are you kidding me? This guy goes into melee attack range with the spider? Okay, well. He certainly has guts, let's put it that way. D moves up as well. They're all going for the Vindicator. Whoa! Easy on the armor, buddy. Yes, Commander. Right here. Good. Centurion. Multi target. One. Two. And three. And let's see how well that is going uh, to unfold. Alright, the crab is down. Couldn't really do much. We're removing. Quite a few blips here and there. I, I was sort of hoping that we would hit the flea. Shadowhawk will now retaliate, potentially against the Vindicator. Alright, we need to withdraw with the Vindicator, that's a given. Okay, I think we can kill the spider. <clears throat> Let's give it a try. Almost. That hit something good. Griffin moves up. And well, that's the kill. Fantastic. Okay, those are the towers. On my way. Moving back. Confirming vigilance. And let's make sure that that guy here does not really get to act. Wait a second. Their flea will attack anyway, so we don't need the precision strike. Yeah, we can <clears throat> we can use the precision strike a bit later because the way that the initiative works is they will get their turn then we get our first turn on three and then they will get another turn Enemy okay not a problem but the flea has hit pretty aye, well aye. All right. Full engagement on the Shadowhawk. Standing by. Hunchback moves over. 
engaging. And let's continue just getting that Shadowhawk down. Fantastic. We got one LRM5. And it is unsteady, so we'll take some retaliation damage, but potentially not as much as we would have expected. Waiting for orders. Vindicator is still their main target. Fantastic. Okay. That's a critical hit. Somehow, Warning. that guy is always hitting the same spot twice. Unbelievable. Yes, command. All right, I'm trying to destabilize on my way. The Shadow Hawk a bit. Mainly because I see that he stands on rough terrain and we can use that to our advantage. Let's use the highest hitting lasers. You want some of this? All right, that's a lot of stability damage. Good, moving back. And now it is a matter of unloading. Engaging with target. Target's taking a critical hit. Engaging physical attack. What? He actually avoided being hit. Good to go. That is unbelievable. Roger that. Good. We did not destroy the leg of the flea, but we at least made it very unlikely that it'll do an awful lot. Getting pretty hot in here, Commander. Moving to position. All right, precision strike. Let's get the leg down. Firing. Unfortunately, we destroyed the center core. That means we're potentially not getting the entirety of the mech back. Coordinates received. Good. Time to hit the flea. Okay, we're just going to wait here for a second. Unfortunately, I can't really cool down, can I? Waiting for orders. Oh yeah, everybody cool down. Okay, good. Warning, enemy reinforcements detected. Okay, where are the enemy reinforcements? Up there. Okay, cool. Good, which means immediately that we're going to right, not Commander. deal with the towers and the enemy reinforcements Roger at the that. same time. 
but we're doing what I told you in so many videos beforehand. We're essentially saying effort and are detouring. Because having that high ground and fighting against them, absolutely fantastic. Lots of medium max. Right opportunity. Good to go. Right, Commander. Orders. And potentially we should let the Vindicator Commander. take the back and not go in first. Good to go. Full throttle. Waiting for orders. Commander. Going full throttle. Hunchback moves go. forward. On the move. Full speed. And how about Lily just waits back here for now. All right, from this angle, we'll do much better. Commander, ready for orders. Understood, moving fast. Something I can do. Bust an eye. Fantastic. We still need to get all the way up to the hill. And there is another medium mech. Who would have guessed, right? Waiting for orders. Shocker. Moving fast. Yes, Commander. No shooting, just running. Oh, got you. They got a raven. All right. Full speed, no shoot. Got it. Got a lock on me. Clever little strategy. You. But you know what counters a I sensor copy. locking strategy? Exactly. Moving out of range. Yeah, what can I do you for? Heading out. Good to go. Sprinting. Indicator moves over. So I've already seen an assassin and I've seen a raven. Curious to see what else they've got. Full throttle. Good, the active probe is on cooldown, so three more turns until that even is going to work again. And we got ourselves the by far superior position. Waiting for orders. Receiving you. Good, we're starting with vigilance. And then it's time to um, spot them out. Good positioning. I'll give them that. Commander. Orders. Locating. 
Location confirmed. All right, hunchback racing. Waiting for orders. Position confirmed. Centurion bracing. Good to go. And Delhi will be careful and keep her just behind the hill for now. Warning. Enemy sensor lock detected. Okay, let's see what the Raven is going to do. Riffin moves back up here, putting in Vigilance, and we got an Assassin down there. Might as well want to keep him right where he stands. 320 armor is not a lot, but he has quite a few weapons. Commander? Roger. Hunchback moves up. Again, time to hit that assassin and hit him well. Solid connection on if they are so loaded with weapons, they usually don't have enough defense. They do have a blackjack. That is a heavy mech. Waiting for orders. Centurion, Vigilance, and fully unloading. Commander? Her right arm, well, if she puts the left arm to the front. That should be fine. There we go. Took a full focus, but we uh, zeroed that guy from 100 to zero in just one turn. Quite a bit of damage from the towers. Let's reserve for now. I want to see what the Raven is doing. Alright, Blackjack moved up. That's fine. Not opposed to that, not at all. Moving up with the Griffin, still tanking. Let's continue with Vigilance. That's 40% damage reduction right there. And the guy definitely needs to be taught a lesson. Oh, it was the Raven that has taken some hits. The Blackjack didn't even do that. Good. Finally, the gloves seem to be off as the Shadow Hawk reveals itself. Good to go. Aye, aye. Good to go. Definitely more susceptible to damage than, than the others because he's Move not entranced. Entranced. So let's just fully unload.
Okay, so far so good. Vindicator took some damage, but like not an Waiting awful lot. Hunchback moves forward. And let's hit the Shadowhawk. Fantastic. Inflicted some heavy damage. Commander? What are we looking at? AC5 and there's an SRM2. Yeah, we took about half of his um, arsenal away. Still staying with our right arm uh, towards the blackjack. And this guy also takes some damage. We want to focus fire, but I also want to make sure that our, uh, that Lily doesn't take too much damage. The Griffin is currently tanking for us. So is the Hunchback. Griffin moves back. Engaging target. We're reducing the initiative of the blackjack. Enemy mech. Critical damage detected. It got a sensor lock on me. All right. So much for our evasion blips. Now it's just pure. Good to go. Pure defense. Let's protect the Vindicator. I really want to make sure that nothing happens to her. The rear armor facing towards the enemy. Shadowhawk does nothing effectively. And let's wait for the Hunchback. Holding for tactical advantage. Hunchback almost looks like he wanted to sacrifice himself with that play. Holding firm. Ready for orders. That is a surprisingly reckless attack. Stupid, some would say. Locked on. Because look at the retaliation damage. <laughs> wow. Right here. Good, no LRMs. And we should be fine, that should be a kill. Thankfully I build in the couple of small lasers, so if they actually really approach the Centurion, he's still good in fighting back. I think this turn it might be a good play to just fall a tiny bit back. Waiting for orders. Commander. Good to go. All right, Hogbite. Falls back, braces, just getting that heat back. Okay, cool. Commander? We can certainly play that game, guys. Lily falls back. Acknowledged. Hunchback falls back. Move on out. Right 
Roger that. Standing by. All right, Griffin moves up. Bulwarks. See if any of the towers react. Answers no. Commander. But apparently that one shot is still be possible. I can do. Now sensor locks would have been fantastic, but we don't have those yet. We do have a solid position though, and the moment that that shadow hawk does something, he's he's history. Well, Commander? too bad. You really messed that up. Affirmative. You only had one thing and one thing only to do, which is don't approach. But you Engage failed. Good to go. Moving to position. But we're going to Keep being entrenched. Critical hit, Commander. Shadow up almost down. Consider it done. Centurion. Fully unloading. And yeah, that's that's the kill. Target eliminated. Now time to deal with that pesky little raven. Full throttle. Griffin moves in. And with six blips, he's hopefully going to tank all of these guys. Let's get Vigilance, just in case I don't want Lily to take any more damage than necessary. The Raven, on the other okay. hand, definitely takes all of the damage that is necessary. Like I said, the ECM is a pretty strong tool. Luckily, the enemy doesn't fully know how to utilize it. Systems holding. Standing by. Move order received. Hunchback moves up. Target confirmed. Fully unloading on the Raven. Almost Critical dead. Commander. Receiving you. Mox can. On the move. Multi shot. Start with a tower. Yes, please. And. Kill that raven as well. Go ahead. We can do this. Let's go. Good. The base is almost in shambles. We certainly got a really, really, really solid um, Salvage out of this. Target destroyed. Let's get fired up. Enemy Man, cannot see go. anything. Fantastic. Vigilance and let's hit that tower here. Affirmative. 
sprinting. Commander. Roger. Hunchback sprints as well. Yes, Commander. And let's kill that light tower here. With we can do this. Let's go. That turret is gone. Good. One more turret to go. Engaging target. Creating heavy damage to an enemy structure. Bring it down. Waiting for orders. Confirmed. All right, let's hit this Roger. large military building. Enemy structure eliminated. Yeah. Good. And as soon as the tower is gone. I'll fast forward. Ready for order. Be there in a jiff. Gaging target. Okay, he Get just barely made it out of life. Ready for orders. All right, I'll pass forward the rest. Fantastic. That was good. I, I like the reshift in positioning when we were climbing up that uh, hill and all of a sudden had such a superior position. Lamentably, the uh, Raven just made it more difficult than it needed to be. But let's take a look what we will get out of it. Oh, Shadowhawk, fantastic. It is the 2H variant, though, with the cannon on top of it. Okay, fair enough. We're finishing, uh, we're finishing a crab. Okay, fair enough. I think we're okay on all of the weapons for now. Great, so the question is really, do we want to use that Shadowhawk going forward and maybe replace a blackjack that we do have? It has a bit more tonnage and I could try to build kind of a cannon uh, based uh, sort of sniper. I'm not sure if that's really going to fly. Typically those builds with the cannons on the lower, lower end mechs are not entirely sexy. We could try to see if I can mount like a really heavy gun, AC-20 or something on uh, onto it or make it another shotgun mech. That wouldn't be the worst. Okay, so let's compare it. Shadowhawk definitely is at the upper end of uh, the medium mech uh, spe uh, specification. It's one of the heaviest. I don't like the hard point distribution on this one here. But if we compare it with 10 tons less in the blackjack, I mean, from an armor perspective alone, it would make sense. Uh, and and uh, we do have three missile hardpoints. So if push comes to shove, I could make another missile boat out of it and just go in with another LRM boat. So all things considered, let's send this guy here to storage for now. The crab 
it's a difficult mech to build. Um, it looks great on paper with the seven hard points, but it is not that easy to build. Good, we got the Shadowhawk here. And the question is really, how do we outfit this guy? So if we look at it, maximize the armor, we have another 15 tons to work with, which is not atypical, right? Um, the problem with all of his guns though is If you pack a really heavy gun, like the AC-20, you need ammunition, typically at least two bits of ammunition, and then it's like, what, 100 damage. Not that great. The AC-5. Kind of doing something along those lines is even worse from a firepower. So the problem with the chassis is, and that's why I didn't like the hard points, you you are not really you're not really dishing out a lot of damage you could go in and kind of do something along the lines of this here yeah and just try your best to snipe but what what are we working with 50 damage that's not going to uh, that's not going to work problem with most of the ballistics and why i am maybe more critical than others of ballistics is they are typically too heavy for what uh, for their output um, they rely on ammunition lasers don't do that yes they do have better heat management but also not phenomenal heat management uh, the uh, the uh, rockets are typically better and just the weight uh, composition the way that it is implemented here doesn't necessarily instill a lot of confidence we don't have uh, we don't have a lot of options here the last system Gave us a couple of purchase options. LBX might be might be an option. That's like what eleven tons. But yeah, then you're ending up with a similar setup as beforehand, but just with a little bit more armor. No, let's try to do something different here. We do have two large LRM batteries. Something along of the lines of an LRM 15 and an LRM. Oh, we even have a third one. So that's 20 LRMs. If I would put in ammunition well, you know, hmm, let's think about it. Yeah, it's probably should go into an LRM boat. So that's 20. So we're shooting 20 LRMs. One LRM is 120. That's six rounds. That's 12 rounds. So that is decent as a starter. How do you round that up and, and make it worthwhile? You could go and essentially make him a sniper. That would potentially be not enough firepower to justify it. And now we're lacking, now we're lacking the, the right hard points. We could go with another LRM five, uh, 5, so that would be 25 overall. We could try to track it and uh, mark it with NARC beacons, but that also requires additional ammunition.
Missile accuracy wouldn't be too bad if we're running a missile boat. The firepower is not phenomenal. How could we improve that? Like, let's say we had another LRM 15. Let's say we get rid of all of that stuff. It's still a bit too little room to actually maneuver. Damn it, I like the Shadowhawk, but this model here makes it hard to build something that would be competent compared to what we have. Even with that setup, we're looking at 160. Let's start from scratch with the thought process. If we were to go with an LBX, kind of solid, moderate range. It's probably not going to fly. Let's try something else. Ammunition. So that is 612. 16 and we're looking at a hundred rounds that means we potentially need a, another hundred okay, so far firepower looks decent 128 not too bad how about we're enriching that with medium laser okay small laser for good measure heat efficiency is still looking absolutely fine so what else could we do we could load some more ammunition okay we do have three tons left over ppc would come in at seven but we could go for a larger laser and get some more long range. We could also just increase the missile accuracy, which in return will deal more damage for us. So that ain't bad. We could chip in more missiles, which isn't bad either. Or, alternatively, I mean, if he has good heat management, it could be really a nice thing, right? Like, this here could be a thing. Four jump jets. We have a lot of armor, like the durability is fantastic. 1200 armor that's good the jump jets will make it easy get rid of the tts a little bit less damage but still fine and that wouldn't be bad i mean i could see this one here working out not super hot in terms of permanent damage output right but pretty much up in the face of the enemy which is good five jump jets means we'll we'll get a lot of um, blips and this could be our tank for all intents and purposes do we have tank equipment that helps i mean we could build in arm equipment and let him uh, be a melee guy but that's potentially not going to work out well let's try this i've um, not had a tank built in a while and it's by no uh, stretch of the imagination bad it is 170 damage um, heat efficiency is potentially not correctly displayed let me just do one thing. We're just going to go for one 
heatsink, four jump jets are plenty. And let's put them here. So just a tiny bit less armor here and there. Nothing major, but yeah, that that seems to be all right. We got good heat management. Even with the jump jets, we should be fine to reduce uh, that quite a bit. So let's try that. Could be our front line R. I'll get it in the schedule. Could be our frontliner. Okay, cool. Well, that brings us to the end of today's episode. Uh, we have another unexpected uh, guest mission, and we're going to do that in the next episode. As always, guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate all of you. Um, uh, click uh, the nice little thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you like to support the channel. And uh, if you like the series of Battletech, feel free to uh, chime in in two days when we're continuing it. Take care. Bye bye.